this is going to be a, a spicy one, I think. This is a very... Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to all the comments on this one because I, I'm... But we're talking about gear check. When somebody joins my group, if I don't know them, I no longer innately trust that they're telling me the truth because there's no way for me to tell. I just have to accept what they're saying. Let me underline it one more time. The current state of the game creates more toxicity and in, in a way encourages it to an extent, actually. Compared From all to, sides. It compared to if there was more transparency in the game. Um, I'm going to talk to Sneb. Talking to the goose. He's been waiting there for ages, um, but, uh, you know, that's uh, I'm trolling him. That's why. And honestly, I like it. So, what are we talking about today? Because this th this is going to be a, a spicy one, I think. This is a very... Yeah, I, one. I'm really looking forward to all the comments on this one. Because I, I'm... I'll start by saying this. I'm willing to have my mind changed. Okay, I'm open to this. But the problem is that no one has given me a very good argument against it. Okay. And so I'm struggling to understand and empathize with the people that are in that antagonize my point of view here because okay. I just don't I don't see why it would be super bad. But if there is a way that this is super bad, then I want people to explain this to me without you know, without without going off the rails here and getting super angry. Okay. But I, I really would like to know. I'm open to having my mind changed. That's it. But we're talking about gear check. And, uh, you know, occasionally you and I will be talking and I'll say something like, you know, it really sucks that they don't have some way to identify what build people are playing or what gear people are playing. You know, just being able to inspect and seeing what people are doing and what they're playing and what they have on them because it forces people to trust each other. And honestly, a lot of the times you can't, and it creates a lot of toxicity. People get really angry and ultimately it's really unfun. Uh, I, I'll give an example of this. I've, I've had this happen many times, by the way. Somebody joins my group. They say that they're DPS. Okay. I go, sweet. We do the first poll. They do 3K DPS. <laughs> I go, I whisper them and I say, hey, like, did you have the right gear on or any, you know, giving them the benefit of the doubt here. Do you have the right gear on? Like, what's going on here? And they go, no, I'm DPS. And I go, well, you know, according to my data here, you're you're doing less damage than the dedicated healer. So something's up. And it creates like an awkward tension because it's, it's not like I want to kick them from the group and that I want them to have a bad experience. But they're just not doing what they said that they were going to do, and I can't help them because I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's because their build is wrong, I don't know if it's because their gear is wrong, and ultimately, a lot of the times, they might not, not even know how to ping that stuff, and it just creates this barrier to helping players or adjusting the squad. If you don't have quickness in a subgroup, well, you don't... You don't know why sometimes either. Like it would just be so much easier to quickly identify it yourself rather than having to constantly beg people to give you information. Same thing with toughness tank. You'll go into a group and you'll say, hey, toughness check. Just want to make sure that, you know, I have the highest toughness. This is what it is. Yeah. Then, you know, a few people will tell you and you'll be like, okay, well, I guess if they're not saying anything, then they have 1K. You go in. And then there's a scourge and they're running around the circle, a veil guardian. They have the tank. You're like, well, how do you have, what's your toughness? And you could have just checked everyone, right? You, you could have done that if such a thing existed. Yeah. And this is why I so, kind of, this is, this is kind of why I called it the earlier, I called it the gear check paradox. Because hmm. the, the lack of ability to do stuff like this easily in the game and have this information available to you or communicated to you, it actually in a way has the opposite effect because the intention is to Absolutely. reduce gatekeeping right like our goal with mm -hmm. a big part of anet's philosophy is we want to make it so you can't do this we aren't wow and in wow you can get gate kept for your gear right and you know for having the right yeah. item wrong item level or just having the wrong items or the wrong build or whatever right in guild wars 2 you can't do that but i think there's a, a a bit of a a little bit of an ironic twist here is that i think the lack of the system has actually created Far more gatekeeping than would otherwise oh, yeah. exist, because now it breeds distrust. Yeah. That's the problem. Exactly, is that I yeah. now when somebody joins my group, if I don't know them, I no longer innately trust that they're mm -hmm. telling me the truth, because there's no way for me to tell. I just have to accept what they're saying, 
And then if you have add-ons and data, you can confirm or deny that. But the problem is that people will give each other a shot and then somebody horribly disappoints them. And they're like, well, why'd you lie to me? You know? And after enough of those experiences, what happens is people start using private, really imperfect yeah. measurements, right? So they'll either ask for a load of KP or they'll, they'll ask you to ping all your gear and ping your build, which is just cumbersome to do every time you join a group. Or they'll they'll just go completely private. Yeah. Go okay. Well, you have to join my Discord. You have to you know hook up your API. You have to do X Y Z. Follow this like handbook of instructions, and then you can play with us. Yeah. And all this does is harm the consumer. It harms us because it makes it more difficult to get into end game content. So people complain about this level of toxicity and gatekeeping, but I actually think it's because there's no transparency system. A hundred percent. Yeah. It 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 doesn't exactly force you to gatekeep, but if you want to have the experience that you want, you kind of have to, right? Um, like this is the this is the thing. If you don't do this, you're going to be on progression every single week forever, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's gonna yes. be yes, <laughs> and, and and that that's not even a joke though, because this this happened to me when I first got into raiding. I couldn't get into any groups. No one would let me into their group because I didn't have KP. So because I didn't have KP, I was forced. I was forced to either join training groups or make my own. Well, at the time, I didn't really feel confident enough to make my own groups because I had literally never stepped foot in a raid. So I wanted to like see what it was like. So I started joining training groups, but I would join training groups and we wouldn't get past the first third at Veil Guardian. And I've been like practicing my rotation and you know, I read up on the boss, but I just got stuck in this infinite loop of training and I could never get the KP. So I think players get really frustrated by this. I think it's a real issue. You don't want to get stuck in that loop because then you never feel like you're progressing yourself. Mm. Yeah. And actually, I do want to quickly add something, and we can, this is going to get edited to the, the start of the video. Listen, everyone listening, don't panic. Gear check will definitely never be added to Guild Wars 2, just so everyone's aware of that. Uh, it's definitely not going to happen. This conversation is very much, uh, very much a meta conversation about the idea rather than uh, like the fact that oh yeah it's going to be added to the game or that you know we're saying ah yes anet must add this realistically will never happen I, I think it's incredibly contrary to the philosophy of the game we're just discussing how that philosophy has somewhat amusingly backfired uh, in a lot of ways or at least in some yeah. ways anyway <laughs> and uh, the reason that we're talking about this the reason it's really important is because we often allude to these sort of transparency systems yeah. like a gear inspect and why they may or may not be good but oftentimes we receive a lot of uh a lot of flack for suggesting these things mm. because they could be very toxic in fact recently i saw somebody say that i was super toxic yeah. for suggesting the idea of gear check um, but the reason that I'm suggesting the idea of gear check is because it would make it infinitely easier for me to help people and less learn toxic. their builds. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, I'm a big advocate for this because anything, data is important. Data is power. It's no, Knowledge is power. If you know what you're doing wrong, if you know what others are doing wrong, you can fix it. But I feel like in Guild Wars 2, a lot of the times we go in without any knowledge of why we lost the previous encounter. And so we just run it back, just do it again. And then nothing changes. I was recently in a group. I just joined a random semi-experienced group on the LFG. They were trying Doom with Emboldened. And they really struggled. Their positioning wasn't very good. There were no boons. It was, it was a bit of a mess. And I, because they weren't talking a lot in chat, I assumed they were in voice. So I said, hey, like, would you like some help? And they said no, which more power to them. Totally their prerogative. But the issue is, I don't think they had the data. I don't think they really knew what was going wrong. I think they just kept throwing themselves at the boss and hoping something would change. And that, in my opinion, is, you know, if you have fun doing that, more power to you because, you know, games are about having fun. But if you want to succeed, if your goal is to beat the boss and to improve as a team and to grow as a player, then the best way to do that is have some kind of baseline knowledge about your impact, your individual impact, your subgroups impact, your squads impact, and measure that over time so you can see your own improvement and make adjustments to get better. Without those things, you're, you're really just shooting into the dark and hoping that something hits. Exactly. And that's not good. And that is where the transparency is super helpful because it allows you to understand what went wrong. 
um, just across the way. And this would also be like another really interesting argument for players using DPS meters, right? That is the time, and logging tools, right? Because then you can look at, oh, the boon up time isn't good. Oh, the damage isn't good, right? Like we know what's actually going wrong, where the problems are. And hell, like the logs can even tell you what mechanics you screwed up, right? Like who got hit by what attack that ended up killing them or wiping the group in some way. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a big deal, you know, like transparency and information access is huge, right? And I think what typically happens is that, um, uh, it, it's super hard to explain this, but this is the key here. When people think about stuff like gear check, they feel like they're being actively excluded, right? But I think what people are missing right now is that people are getting passively excluded to an extreme degree, right? You And actively excluded. Yeah, well, and, yeah, <laughs> and actively, right? Because, yeah, you're absolutely right. Because players will say, well, if you want to join our group, then you're going to have to apply to join our static, right? You're going to have to apply to join this guild, right? And there's a trial for this guild. And you're going to have to link your API so we can look at all your characters and we can see how many times you've killed stuff. We can tell if you're telling the truth, right? Um, and the passive exclusion is the fact that players simply won't engage with the systems. Right, you'll never see the groups because people aren't going to use it. Um, and that means that there's a huge amount of exclusion that is happening. But in a way, it, it doesn't feel as bad because it's kind of happening as a result of the community responding to the lack of transparency rather than, I guess, the game systems enabling it in, an ex in some way. I don't know. What do you... What do you what do you think about well, this distinction? I would slightly here? disagree. I, I think that it actually feels just as bad, but it's just bad in a different way. Yeah. So instead of you saying, oh, I'm getting excluded from groups, you go, no groups exist. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I mean, it, which, which would you prefer? That you get excluded from a group and then have an idea of what you're supposed to get so that you can get into said group? Or would you rather no group ever advertise so that you can't see it? Shouldn't that bother people more that people don't even want to communicate with others because they feel like if they gave you a requirement that they couldn't trust you or that you would just blame them out for having a requirement? I, I feel like that's actually really problematic culturally in the game. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I really think it is. I think it is a big um, impediment to this, the scene growing. Right, because it it, it makes it means that well, I, I think we've talked about this before, right? Like any barrier to entry is like a huge deal, particularly if it's early on, right? The earlier on the barrier is, like I, I feel like the more impactful it is. You know what I mean? Like if if you have a barrier, like you know, you might have to get a uh, stat infusions, right, to optimize your damage to go for a record. That's a barrier, but at the end of the day, by the time you've got to that point, it's kind of irrelevant, right? You can do that. But if the yeah. first barrier you encounter is that to find a, a group, you're going to have to kind of go through a third-party application. Um, and again, uh, give all this information, use these third-party tools um, to get this, get into Discord, right? Get into a communication, like get on a schedule, right? All this sort of stuff. Like that is a pretty big barrier to entry, right? I would say that is a way bigger barrier to entry than having the right gear set, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of perception. Oh. Usually, usually when I bring this up, the counter is... Well, that would be so toxic, Sneb, because now what's going to happen is every time you join a group, people are going to check your gear. And if you don't have the right gear, they're going to kick you. And my counter to that is, doesn't that literally yes, already happen? True. Yeah. But I, the, you know what the worst thing is? That, people I, I don't will get kick, it. People will kick you for, like, bad reasons now. They'll, like, think yeah. you have the... Look right now you'll get kicked if people think you have the wrong gear at least if people kick you for having the right gear they can you actually do have the, the wrong gear right you know what i mean right right now they just kind of guess and they might boot you right uh because there's oh, no yeah. way people to actually even tell. worse you uh, even worse yeah. <laughs> they kick you because you accidentally had the wrong gear set on uh and then you go oh like sorry i screwed up that pull and they go well you just don't have the right gear kick because they don't trust that you're telling the truth. Because mm. <laughs> there's, there's no, no way, way to verify. for them to they verify. Can't ver yeah. 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 Uh, that's actually happened to me, by the way. Oh, really? <laughs> wait, that happened, wait, that happened yeah. to you? Or, or like... Yeah, I, I accidentally went in with oh, the no. wrong gear and I was pulling super bad numbers. Oh, yeah? And, and like midway through the run, I said, hey, yo, I have the wrong gear on. And <laughs> we wiped and they instantly kicked me. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
And then I whispered them and I was like, hey, I legit, I just had the wrong gear on. And they're like, sorry, we filled. <laughs> Uh, feels bad, there, bad. There's just something. Fu I, I, I don't know. I shouldn't be laughing at this because this isn't funny. But there's something funny to me about like instantly kicking someone with like just like nothing, just instantly kicked. I, I think people are really jaded, and and the reason that they're really jaded is because they get lied to a lot, and they they just don't know. There's just no way for them to verify without a million extra steps that someone is telling the truth, and so they just don't want to deal with it. And that's a problem. That that's what I'm trying to get around. I want people to be able to go, okay. I have the knowledge, the data that empowers my group. You know, hmm. You know what? Our boon uptime is not very good in subgroup three. Let me check, you know, the, the boon provider's concentration. Oh, their concentration is just a little bit low. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should, you know, help them boost that up a bit. Or maybe they should take a different trait or whatever, right? And imagine if you could fix things like that rather than just kicking someone and hoping the next person does it right. I, I, I feel like that would give people way more opportunity. Typically when I say that, people go, yeah, but that's not what people will do. Okay, well, that that's pretty pessimistic. But, uh, I mean, what <laughs> the alternative is what we have now, which, yeah, which is, is where worse, people will... Right, yeah. It's, it's way worse. Yeah. It, it's so much I'd rather worse, give though. people the agency to choose. I'd rather yeah. somebody say, hey... You know what? You don't have the right gear. I, if this were me, and they they said, "Hey, you know what? You don't have the right gear, so we can't let you into the group." I go, "Okay. Well, what gear do I need to get?" And I, honestly, I I believe enough in the Guild Wars 2 community that people would be like, "Hey, like here's like a resource or a guide. Like go check this out," and that would leave you to go, you know, have a task to do before you could get into the group. Is that the best, most ideal possible situation? Maybe not, but it's certainly better. Then constantly get being kicked from groups and having no idea why. Uh, I've I've had people join my groups before, or I've been in a group where the commander like, we go in, the person says, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm DPS. They go in, they they do like five k DPS. They just kicked, no context. Okay. Somebody I will whisper me in the group, and they'll say, why did I get kicked? And I, I go, well. <laughs> You know, it's not the most comfortable thing. I, I so. just want to, I want to hit something here because a few people have said, oh, you know, you know what's going to happen? Not meta build, not meta gear, kick, right? And, and people are saying, oh, that's naive to think this way. Gamers, they, they do that I, I, already. Yeah, I really want to hit this. I want to hit this again, really on the nose here. Gamers, this happens now, right? It already happens and it would probably happen less if you could go the other way, because you'd actually be able to determine if someone's got good gear on, if they know what they're doing, right? Okay, um, like, are you gonna trust, like, let, let's, 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 let's see, like, a, a really funky build. Um, something like DPS Tempest. Um, are you, would a pug group trust a DPS Tempest now? Hmm, maybe a, not nice. so much. But if that DPS Tempest joins and they have some way to ping their gear and their build and the leader looks at it and goes, oh shit, this guy's got full ascended gear, the build looks good, this looks like a try hard player, then yeah, you're probably not going to get kicked for that. To be fair, you probably wouldn't even get kicked for that now, actually. Like, you, you very rarely get kicked for running even like relatively unusual builds, by the way. Um, as long as the, you can play the them okay, moment. then yeah. you're probably going to be fine. Yeah. But but here here's the beautiful part about that, right? If If somebody joins... And let's say they're not crit capped. If you theoretically, if you had a tool that could show you that, you could say, hey, you know, you're actually not crit capped. Did you know that? And a newer player could go, what does that mean? And you go, oh, well, like you need you need your precision to be high enough to where you have a hundred percent crit chance, otherwise your power build is, isn't gonna be as strong. And they go, Oh, well, how do I do that? Well, you could just get an accuracy sigil, because you know, I noticed that you're running a you're running force and impact. You just drop the impact, put on accuracy and you should be good to go well that's a pretty easy fix right instead what happens is you go in somebody underperforms and they do way less damage and then you're all pissed off at them because you don't know why they're doing less damage is it because their rotation is bad is it because they have the wrong gear you you have is it because they're not pressing the right button like you just don't know and, and that uh, unknown breeds a lot of frustration in groups because you can't help somebody you can't fix something when you don't know what needs to be fixed 
And, and okay, let's go the other way here, by the way. I agree that um, not a lot of people are going to be as kindly and as gentle as Sneb in this regard, but let's talk about it from the other direction as well. Like having this type of mm. transparency in the game allows players to learn from others. If someone's pulling mad DPS on an open world boss, you can go, holy shit, what is this guy running? Right? And you can say, whoa, I can look at this guy's build. And you could say, you could ask, but here's the thing. Any barrier is going to drop it that the rate of that happening like an absolute lead balloon, right? If you actually have to talk to another person to ask for their build, okay, that and is it's just not gonna happen. I'm sorry, it's just not gonna happen. And they have to respond, right? That yeah. that's the big thing. Yeah. And and frankly, when somebody asks me what my build is, everybody just think about this for a moment. Just take a moment. Somebody asks you what your build is. What do you do? Okay, I'm gonna press H go into my build. I can tell them the traits. I can, you know, copy paste the build, I guess. But then what happens when you talk about equipment? This is where things get real scuffed, mm. me, right? There's some nuance here. Uh, you can't just ping everything perfectly. It, it doesn't work quite the same way. And, uh, and, you know, sometimes you need certain infusions or you don't need infusions or you need to change certain things. It just gets really complicated. Uh, and that can be very frustrating for people. I don't want to have to type all that out, you know? I don't want to have to be like, yeah, you. so you're going to need this infusion and this slot, and I'd rather somebody just be able to see it, you know? So typically what people do instead is they just tell them to go to a, a build website, I guess, but uh, think about it. You know, that's a barrier. You you whisper someone, they they might just not respond because it's too ridiculous. You know, it's, it's like a ridiculous thing to have to go and seek all this stuff out. It is, yeah. And I th and again, like, I, I want to be super clear about this because again, I, I really do get the feeling that um, a lot of people are maybe unaware of the state of play and that me and Sneb are pushing for the game to somehow like enable toxicity more. Let me underline it one more time. The current state of the game creates more toxicity and in, in a way encourages it to an extent actually. From all sides. It, it compared to if there was more transparency in the game, right? Like, this is... I, And the weird thing is, I actually view that as somewhat inarguable, right? I would... Yeah. I don't know if there's a good argument against that position. Because seriously, uh, like, the, the way things are right now, it does get pretty murky, right? And there's a reason why people go to statics and don't use the LFG. There's a reason why... Uh, the raid scene is considered very, very opaque, and all the kill proof requirements are ridiculous and crazy and, and wonky, right? There's a reason for that, and it's because of a lack of transparency. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I really, I'm really going to encourage people, please, I'm willing to have my mind changed on this, but the problem is that all of these issues that everyone keeps bringing up with this, I, I'm pretty in tune with the raid scene. It's I worse raid now, a lot, and right? I have... It, <laughs> All of these problems that you're talking about, they already happen, but they're just worse. Because if somebody was like, if somebody's going going to exclude you because of their gear, they can do it now. Except they're going to force you to ping all of your gear yep. in front of everyone. Yep. Single you out and then kick you. Or they're not going to do that. You're going to go in, you're going to underperform, waste nine people's time because you weren't prepared. Uh, but you didn't know. Maybe it's not your fault. You just didn't know. But you go in, you you think you're prepared, you underperform, wipes the group, then they're all mad at you yep. for lying, and then seemingly, they get toxic, and they kick you, yep. and then they're all toxic, so, and then that breeds distrust, yep. and they won't invite someone like you back again. And you had a and shit experience as well, and you had a really unpleasant, yeah. uncomfortable experience that could have been, it would have still been negative. Don't get me wrong, it, but like, hey, sorry, you don't have the right gear for this. We're gonna have to, you know, we're gonna have to kick you. But that is so much better than people getting fucking mad at you, like flaming you, uh, and then kicking you, right? You know? <laughs> and of course- So you can do that with gear, right? You can force yeah. people to ping their gear and stuff. It's not perfect. They'll like, make you show pants or something. Yeah. Uh, whatever, they can do that. They can also make you ping your build. Yep. So it's just extra steps. It's just extra steps, because then, because then, if you won't ping your build, they'll just kick you. Exactly. Yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah, because you can say, <laughs> so, "Oh, it's, it's optional right now. It's optional, but it's also not optional because of this, right? If you refuse, yeah. then people can just kick you, right? They'll just do it. They'll yeah. say, "Oh, you don't want to link your build? Hey, that's fair enough. But we're going to remove you from the group, right? Um, yeah. All it they, is, they is it, all it is, is a worse version of the system, 
right? Essentially, is what it is. It's it's just it's just worse. Yeah. So all of that happens, right? It already happens all the time. And then you add on things like KP because people are okay. Well, you've, you've shown me that you have some pants, but I can't quite, you know, I'm pretty sure you can't see stats and stuff when people ping, right? Isn't that true? You can't uh, see stats? You, you, it, it, it depends on the item, right? Like stat selectable stuff okay. and legendaries get weird, uh, but it will work sometimes. Yeah. And you can see like the room okay. and stuff. Yeah, so let's say you can't see it. So they go, okay, well, that's kind of close, but now you also have to show me like 500 KP. <laughs> yeah, because now, <laughs> like, now you've got to prove that you've done the so encounter silly. or you have some experience, yeah. yeah and I think it, it's- It's very silly. And because of how little pe little trust people have, because the system isn't robust and isn't verifiable, those numbers have spiraled out of control, right? Completely out of control. Yeah. We're, we're going to like 1K LI or, you know, 500 KP. And the reason for that is very simple, because again, like you need to have like these weirdly extreme requirements, because if you don't, um, then it's not going to work super well, right? Um, no. It's just not good enough. And like this would be solved by having more transparency in the system. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that. Oh, you know, people wouldn't have dumb requirements for groups if you had uh, more transparency and say experience level and gear and builds and so on. That's not what I'm saying. You would have less though it would be less severe um than and, and you know what than, than it is now <clears throat> people can still be toxic right so we could add gear inspect they they could still flame you out they could still do all of those things the issue is just less steps <laughs> yeah it, it's less steps it'll breed less frustration in my from my view and, and if you disagree with that i would love to hear the point of view because to me i would much rather be kicked immediately because i don't meet the requirements and they could see it then go in, have a couple pulls, and nobody knows mad. why we're failing. Then suddenly they point the finger at me and for right or wrong reasons, because you just don't have the data. And then they kick you and you don't even know how to improve or what to fix. So you just you just walk away sad, you know, and that's not good. You don't want people to have bad experiences in group play. It damages the culture, it damages the community, and ultimately it's a very bad thing. Yes. How it is. So to share logs of your previous boss skills from Rage and get kicked, you're not 90% DPS. The thing is, is that you um a, a lot of people um a, a common response to what me and Sneb are saying here is that oh you, you guys are being naive. Guys, nobody's gonna go 90% of raid core. Like a st maybe a static group would. Maybe if you want to join SC, they'd say, hey, we want to see some logs. In fact, if you want to join a high-end guild, they will already do this. In fact, they'll make you play live. Um, they'll go further than that. They'll say, you're going to join our clear and we're going to watch you. We're going to see exactly what you do and exactly how you do it. And we're going to look at your DPS. We're going to look at your CC. We're going to look at your responsiveness. We're going to look at how you respond when things go wrong. They will already do this. You're not going to have like random pugs asking you to like execute a perfect rotation. Right? It's just not going to happen, right? Um, like, uh, but yeah, guilds that are high end are obviously going to do this, right? They already do. That's not going to change. And, 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 and by the way, I, I actually have a slight problem with calling this uh, elitist, by the way. Because I feel like elitist is a very, very negative connotation. But if you want to join a high performance guild, you need to actually have high performance. Right? This is a you slight tangent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, yeah. Like, they want to do speed runs. You need to be able to do really good damage. Like, no shit, right? I mean, <laughs> what are you expecting? Yeah. I, I think people like to throw yeah. around elitist. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite things to do when somebody yeah. says, oh, is, is rating still elitist? Because I heard that, you know, you were forced to play the meta back in the day and like you couldn't play anything else. Mm. Usually I'd say, well, can you explain to me a little bit more? Like, tell me about how you got into groups. Well, yeah, I would join groups from the LFG and they'd kick me because I wasn't playing the thing that they advertised for. I go, okay, did you ever make your own groups? Mm. No, why not? I don't know. I just find that really interesting. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of Reddit posts lately where people get really upset about things like Mechanist or they go, I can play Tempest, but nobody will let me play. And I, I really want to encourage people, if, if that's bothering you a lot, then let's change the culture. Let's do it together, right? Make groups where people can play whatever they want. Mm. And uh, I mean, maybe you want to you know, as long as we have the boons covered, we're good. 
Like be, be the change. If you hate that people are asking for certain things, well, you know, I agree. Sometimes people are a little bit too stringent about those things, but ultimately it's their group, right? It's their group. Yeah. They, they want to run it how they want to run it. Some people want to speed clear. Some people want very specific strategies and that's okay. You know what? Does it suck for you sometimes? Maybe. But what you can do to fight that and what's within your own locus of control is you go, okay, well, if these other folks are doing things and they won't let me play, then I'm going to make a group where people can play together with however they want. Yeah. And I see very yeah. few people doing that. Let, let's kind of hit a few things here as well. Like, number one, I kind of reject the premise that people get kicked for playing slightly unusual builds. I actually don't think this happens. I think you can join on your Reaper or, hell, your core NG or your Scrapper that doesn't show up that much these days or on Vindicator. You're not getting kicked for playing those builds. No. It, it's not it going to happen. But... I, I, I actually don't think so. Like, if you join and do, like, 3k DPS, yeah, sure. But if you join on Vindicator and you do your thing, no one's going to kick you. Yeah, uh, I actually had a Vindicator join the other day, and my first thought was, ooh, I've never seen a Vindicator at Samurai. I have no idea what's going to happen. And they were like top two DPS. They, they slayed. And I, and I actually said out loud on stream, Big. I was like, wow, they, they're, they're, they're killing it. Like, they're doing so well. And uh, I think people get kicked for playing slightly different or unusual builds badly. Yes. And I think the same oh people boy. would get kicked for playing the meta build. Here come the, oh my god, the YouTube cards. Okay. Yeah, you're, you, and this is, you, that is perfect. Absolutely. And the problem is, is that you then get the misdiagnosis, right? Like, people will get kicked for performing poorly on a build and then go, I got kicked for playing this build. Right? That is the, that is how it usually goes. Which is obviously not a very good reading of that um, of that particular situation. I gotta I gotta address this one too. Not Do everyone it. enjoys leading groups. That's totally fine. Um, but if you refuse to make your own groups, or you don't like it, or don't want to, or whatever the reason is, then you will always be reliant on others to accept or decline you, and you have to be okay with that. You have to accept that if someone else is leading, they can impose whatever rules they want on you because they're creating a culture around their squad. You might you might join my group and you might not like it, right? Like I've, I've kicked people, so I, I have specific rules for my groups, right? Mm -hmm. I've kicked people for not abiding by my culture, right? Where they, they're like making fun of someone or they're making fun of a new player, whatever it is. It's not just about DPS checks and stuff too. People who create groups, people who are leaders, have the absolute right to uh, to set the rules and their strategy and the requirements. I kick people from SH when I go, hey, we're doing this strategy and they, they want to come blast on like a power build and they keep, you know, they're, they're going to constantly kill the tormented dead and blow up the group. I go, no, like you, you need a Condi group. Like this, you need a Condi DPS. This is the strategy that we're doing. And you know what? Some people might hate that. But, you know, if I'm the leader, I can set the rules. So know that, yes, I understand that leading isn't as easy as we make it sound, or it's it can be a little bit frustrating or challenging or scary even. But that's the, the, the consequence of choosing not to be the leader is that you can't set the rules. Pretty much. That's the way it is. And I think it also is really worth noting, this is, this is again, slightly tangential here, um, but players... Players are entitled to play how and with whom that they wish, right? If players want to play a certain way and they make a group wanting to play that way, that is fine. It's kind of what Sneb was saying there, but I wanted to really kind of hit that here because there were a, kind of a few comments about how, oh, but you know, like, you know, I, I don't want to play that way, right? Well, that's totally cool, right? But the thing is, you, you can't, in a way, you can't, like, reverse impose how you want to play on other people. In the same way that a commander can't tell you how to play, right? You can't tell them how to play. But the thing is, if you join someone's group, you're essentially saying, okay, I'm going to play ball here a little bit, right? If you're engaging with other human beings, there's kind of like a mutual respect there where you're going to say, right, we're going to work together on this, and I'm going to agree to play a certain way, basically. 
You have every right to feel like every right to feel how you want to feel, right? If if you're upset that you can't play your core elementalist build because somebody doesn't want you to, and every group you join, people are like, nah, we, we're looking for something else. You can be like, man, that sucks. Totally validate that you can feel however you want to feel. This is where I have a problem, though. Then you take those feelings and you harness them and you say, all of those commanders are toxic and evil because they won't let me play. Mm. That's not true. They're setting requirements for their team and they have eight other people. As somebody who leads a lot, let me tell you, one of the worst possible things is that I have to kick someone. I hate doing it. I think everyone hates doing it. It's not fun. It doesn't make you feel good. But the problem is that sometimes your hand is forced because you're with, if you're the leader, you have nine other people on your team. And if one of those people is not abiding by the rules or, you know, they said they were experienced, but they're not, or they, you know, they're playing, they're playing something that's maybe a little off meta and they're severely underperforming. Well, what do you do? If it's preventing you from getting the kill and, and progressing, then you have eight other people now that are like, what you gonna do? You gonna do something? Because if you don't do something, I'm gonna leave. And so what, like, tell me, what, what do you do? You, you're, you're sort of forced to do something because if you don't, then everyone starts to distrust you as a commander, as a leader. Yeah. I and uh, I mean, I, I had this happen the other day. I think I shared it, I shared it with you the other day, Teapot. Remember, I was, I did uh, a wing seven yes. full clear all CMs. Yes. And I, I said experience. And some people joined and I was kind of sus because they were, their positioning was pretty off. Their damage was kind of low, but we managed to sort of brute force through Adina and Sabir. We get to Kadeem the Peerless. They're all over the place. They're standing in the wrong spots. I message someone and I say, do you know the fight? And they say, yes. And I said, okay, if you know the fight, then what happens or what changes on CM at 40%, 30% and 20%? And they didn't know. So they didn't know the fight. Then uh, another person, same group from LFG. I, I whisper them and I said, do you know the fight? They say, no. I go, well, why didn't you tell us? Because we just wiped four times in a row because you didn't know the mechanics. And I, so what do you do, right? Do you, do you just say, well, I can't kick anyone. That would be toxic. Or do you say, okay, well, you, you know, you're not fitting the requirements of the group. We have to remove you so that we can progress. I, I, it sucks. Like, I, I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, I like kicking people because I don't. I actually hate it. I loathe it. I, it's the worst thing. I would rather somebody jump on Discord with me and, you know, I guide them through, teach them how to do the boss and we get through it together than kick someone. It is the worst feeling ever because you feel like you're letting a lot of people down. I think it definitely does um, drive people away from leadership, actually, is that running into situations like that is uncomfortable. And unfun, to be honest. It's not good. You don't yeah. want to do that. But this is this this topic, you know, people might call it tedious or whatever, but it comes up so much because it is a big element of the culture in Guild Wars 2. Oh yeah. Because we don't have systems that automatically put people together. So there is always somebody that has the lead that uh, is making the decisions. And when somebody is making decisions like that, somebody's gonna be upset. And, uh, you know, the degree of that upsetness, it varies. And it, I think it, it really, I, I think it makes all of these kind of little mini problems way worse. Because you don't have this automated system, because you don't have a holy trinity that you can fall back on. Um, because it is so driven by community and culture and the social side. All of these problems are a big deal. Because it's quite hard to resolve it systemically. That's why we're talking about it right now. We're talking to the community, to the player base. Is because in a way, this to an extent is something that we need to fix. Right? Like this is a cultural thing. Um, it's hard to do because again, we're, we're talking about a systemic issue, right? Like the fact that there's a lack of transparency um, within the game systems. But there is also like a very strong cultural element that needs to be talked about here with the, the way that people actually interact with these systems. Uh, because it causes a lot of problems. It causes a lot of problems. It, it really does come down to this kind of passive exclusion versus active exclusion style thing. Um, for, for whatever reason, I think players are much more... much more okay with being passively excluded from something rather than like saying, okay, right, you can't join. 
for this reason and saying, yeah, yeah, you're going to have to actually do something and we're going to measure it on you. We're going to actually look at your character with a magnifying glass and measure it. Um, whereas right now, like, you, you know, it's just going to be much more of a fiesta uh, to get into the stuff. I think additionally, yeah. um, it, it, it is also worth noting, by the way, um, that there is something that is slightly related to this as well. Um, oh man, oh, I'm going to leap. I'm going to leap in front of the bullet for you, Snappy. I'm about to take a bullet for you, buddy. Okay. You're going to, you're going to enjoy this. There is a reason why people set these requirements too. I think that it's maybe tempting to think that, oh, look, they're just arbitrarily gear checking me for no reason. It doesn't actually matter. I'm afraid it does. Uh, in open world, does it matter if people have um, good builds? Well, in Dragon's End, it might, but everywhere else, not really. But in a raid, if you have, if you have like one or two players who have like a build that's not super hot, is that a big deal? Ah, not the end of the universe. In a new group, it would be a big deal, right? Because there you want to take every advantage that you can have. But if you just want to get the job done, having a bunch of players that essentially don't have a good strategy, their character doesn't really do anything or isn't very useful in the context of a raid, then you're going to have problems. The reason people set requirements on these groups is so they don't have problems. It's so that they can clear the content, get the loot, and move on. People don't want to wipe over and over and over again. That's why these requirements is they aren't just made up and arbitrary. <clears throat> In a way, they're based off the game. Like, this is actually something that I think we, even we maybe haven't talked about this, Neb, actually. The game actually sets these requirements in a way, right? On Veil Guardian, you need to be able to heal the greens, right? You need a tank on Veil Guardian. You need to have Condi damage to kill the Red Guardian on Veil Guardian, right? Um, these are things that the game is saying you need to get over this hurdle, otherwise you shall not pass, right? And that is why these requirements exist. They are an extension of the game mechanics and the game systems telling you, you need this to beat this content. You need this much DPS. You need this much healing, right? In order to pass through here. Um, and ultimately you have, there's, that's when you've, in that, you've hit bedrock there, right? At that point, right? You've got bedrock because you, you can't say, well, I don't think that's fair that the game is requiring I do DPS. Well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to, how would you even respond to that step? What would you, what would you say? I mean, like, it, it's, it's supposed to be challenging. It's supposed to like test your skill, right? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> what I usually tell people is one of the beauties of Guild Wars 2 is that you have so many options. And one way that the game expresses this to you is by introducing you, you to switching skills and things because they put a barrier in the way. For example, they say, hey, you can't, if you don't have Condi here, you actually can't pass. And I, I think that's one of the beautiful things about Guild Wars 2 is that it, these encounters sort of force you to play in different ways so that you can see all of the possibilities. I think Harvest Temple CM at a, at a very high level did that so well. Stealth, stun breaks. Right, like it was using everything. It was using everything possible because it wanted you to use all of the cool things in the game. And I don't think that um, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that it's it's fun when the game says, "Hey, you know, here's a puzzle for you. Figure out how to solve the puzzle." I think, however, it's very interesting because to me, MMO culture has shifted quite a lot. Where people are like, oh, "I don't really want to solve the puzzle. I just kind of want to keep going." And for me, my play style, I find that kind of disappointing because I find it fun to solve the puzzle, right? Like, okay, uh, we're struggling with this. How do we change things up to be better? Like the first day that Harvest Temple CM came out, I was with the group. We were running all scourges, <laughs> nice. pretty much. It's good. And then, and then we were like, like okay, see. well, we can't get to these greens fast enough. What if we bring scrappers for quickness? We so bring scrappers and we we're super speeding. Like, okay, this is, this is working better. Anyway, we kept iterating, right? Because we kept trying to solve the puzzle and find a way to mitigate the things that were happening to us. I think that's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. It is very cool. It is a lot of fun, actually, to figure this stuff out and try different things. Um... But yeah, like the raids are a puzzle. They are something that you need to solve. Or, or honestly, a lot of instance content is something that you have to solve. Ultimately, the game itself, it, I, you know, in a lot of ways, right? Even think about the content that's very, very easy. Um, you know, 
open world content is like this. It's just that the bar is so low that um, th the game kind of like lets you win, right? I, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Like, you know, the, the, you know, if you, in theory, if you don't do enough damage to an open world boss, you will lose, right? Like the game will say, GG, right? Like I have defeated you. Like in practice, this almost never happens because again, the bar is so low that it's almost unfathomable that you could lose. But video games are an interactive media that have fail states. I mean, look, I mean, you've seen it, Seb. The pinata, man, it can win. The pinata can, yeah. you know, can... You don't CC the pinata, it just runs away. Yeah. <laughs> what? Sometimes the pinata just escapes, right? It just gets away. Yeah. There's nothing just walks into it. the sunset. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gone at that point. But, um... And, and yeah. your uh, confetti infusion with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, that was the one, right? That confetti, the confetti uh. was in that exact pinata, right? Like, and unfortunately, <laughs> and now it's gone. Very unfortunate stuff, oh. right? Yes. Uh, other, there's one big thing that I think we forgot to talk about, or at oh, least really? I have. Oh. Opt-in, potentially. Uh, and I've seen people sort of a flutter with this in the chat. Mm -hmm. I actually think that if you add gear check, which will obviously probably never happen, but if they were to add it, I would make it opt-in. So you can decide whether or not you would like to share those details. And here's why I would do that. Okay. One... If there are people that are, you know, trying to hide builds and stuff for competition oh. at a very high level, Ooh. I think it would be fair to say that, you know, they don't want their whole squad comp inspected Ooh, every time yeah. they try to, you know, do something competitive. So on one hand, it's good for the competitive scene. On the other hand, I think it's important that people uh, have the agency to choose whether or not people can see. Because some people might be embarrassed. You know, they're a new player. They don't want people to judge them or whatever. And that's fine, uh, especially for open world. However... What everyone's going to say is this. Yes, you will be forced to opt in and if, if you're doing random group content, like instanced content. And uh, I don't think that's a bad thing because they make you do it anyway. It yeah. already happens. They already force you to show KP. They already force you to hook up your API and look at all your characters. They already force you to ping stuff. Uh, and you know what? I, we just take away that step. I think so, so if you want to join, you need to, you need to, people need to be able to see what you're playing. I think some way to, I think a realistic implementation of this would actually be the ability to link a gear template, right? Because you know how you can link a skill template, right? I can copy my build template and put it in the chat. I think a semi okay way to do this would be um, to be able to copy paste that. Additionally, the opt-in system could essentially just show this, right? It could show the, the um, yeah. it could show a build template. There'll be some implementation of that. Again, I actually think yeah. this is extremely unlikely to ever be added to the game. Again, I think it yeah, is. it's not happening. It, it's not going to happen. Um, but that would be the way it would probably end up being done. I I, I'd like to see it similar to how it's done in PvP. Like when an arena partner spectating PvP yeah. matches, they can oh, see what build yes. people are playing and the amulet and stuff. I'd love it if just some windows popped up that showed you what people had. That's it. An opt-in. Yeah. Can be opt-in. No yeah, problem. totally opt-in. I'm, fi I'm fine with that because in open world, um, some people might not want to be like, you don't want some some player to just walk up to new players and be like, LOL, you suck. You don't have any gear or whatever. I just feel like that'd be annoying. I feel like that would very seldom happen, by the way, but you don't want it. You don't want to give any excuse for that. Yeah. Uh, the next thing I think people would counter with is, well, in open world, then people will try to gear check you for things like Dragon's End. Well, it already happens. Sorry to, sorry to bum you out, but yeah. literally there are groups that if you don't ping your build and show that you're providing quickness or alacrity, they will kick you uh, and you will not get into their map because they will uh, try to create a new map with you not in it. Oh, yes. Oh, that will happen. <laughs> which, which I agree sucks sometimes. But uh, that, that's what they want because they're trying to guarantee that they get that kill. And I suppose, you know, if that's how they want to do it, then that's how they want to do it. 